Hi guys and welcome back to Fly Tying with me, Telis Katsugianos, and we're now up to episode uh, 15. It's we've been doing it for a while now, uh, and uh, in this episode we're gonna do um, coastal flies or streamers uh, because these flies will of course work regardless if you're fishing fresh or salt water, but. This one, for example, the killer worm is uh, one of my patterns that I created in about 20 years ago. Got inspired by the ones who taught me about fly fishing in the middle 90s. They used uh, ostrich and different other materials to do this kind of fly, which is in the beginning an imitation of a uh, clam worm. It's a worm that uh, is hatching in uh, or spawning in early midsummer uh, around midsummer July or July actually and during the night time when this happens the sea trout goes crazy and then of course around the coastal area you have uh, you have I don't know 40 different kinds of uh, or species of different worms sandworms or all of those types so this is a very good all year round pattern and of course works as a good attractor if you're tying it in different bright colors. Uh, the worms per se, the imitation of it, they are a little bit orangey in color or a little bit pink uh, skin color and some of them are even a little bit brownish. So the killer worm or drepar mask, which is the Swedish name for it, uh, is a very very good sea trout fly and most of the times, I would say 90% of the times I fish, fish the coast, I'm using this one. Uh, it, it's very easy fly to tie. There is a, a little bit special dubbing technique that we're going to look at tonight. Then we're also doing a personal variation of the woolly bugger, a brown one that is also very very good for coastal fishing, uh, but very very good for trout in general. So I hope you're ready because today we're going to do hook flies and streamers. Right, the killer worm is gonna be tied with a white thread since that's very easy to hide different uh, light materials or the thread gets hidden easier in, uh, in the material. When I'm tying on a hook fly, same as a double hook for salmon, where the natural bend of the hook comes, that's a good uh, uh, point to s stop wrapping backwards because if I'm going f further down here attaching a tail that will point down you want that tail to just continue out from the hook shank uh, normally it is alignment with the point of the hook here it's not always the case but most of the times this is a good measurement when you're coming around the point here have a look where you're thread or bend this. Okay, this fly just contains marabou and the original one was made with orange so we're gonna tie that. Uh, you can be more prepping like cutting and making dubbing and everything. We are just gonna cut or pinch out here what we use. Getting a little bit natural taper in that. I want the tail to be about the same uh, length as the total hook when I'm tying this fly. Uh, I don't want it, the tail to be longer because that's easily gets tangled in the hook. A uh, little bit shorter than the total length, more a little bit of the body length is what I want. And Marabou is easy to pinch off like that. Uh, now I'm gonna add the ribbing which is just regular monofilament like tippet material, 0, 16 millimeters to 0 20 so around 4x or 3x I would say 4x is a good tippet to use for uh, ribbing okay attaching that and now comes the dubbing technique you can either pinch off like this and just regularly dub the hook and then you go back and forth and back and forth. It will take a while to cover all this body. Uh, but of course that's the classic way to dub. I normally just do this. First of all I prepare what I want. So I'm pinching off or cutting off 
You can do this more carefully if you want to save material by cutting all the way or if you're going to produce a lot of lice. Then you just take the marabou in your hand like this and make it more dubbing friendly. Like this. Then I'm just putting that like so. And I'm starting to wrap my thread. Going back and forth a little bit, making this material spin around. This takes a few flies until it's the technique is functional, but after a while when you do this you will never dub in the regular way again, because this saves time and material and uh, the total effect will still be the same or even better when you want this bushy fly. Between your finger or in your hand, just pinch it there, make a few uh, turns with the thread on the same spots, you lock it and then you start moving forward. There we go, and then pull back. Now, the ribbing in this fly has nothing to do with uh, anything else than just making the fly stronger, more durable for bites and fish. Uh, I used to tie it without ribbing many, many years because I thought the fly just didn't need it because, I mean, it doesn't take any time to tie this. You can just tie 10 in a few minutes. But of course, if you add the ribbing, which I nowadays do, the fly will last longer. You don't have to tie as many flies, of course. Then you cut it off. Uh, then I'm putting glue on the thread. As you can see, this is a very simple fly. But if you're ever coming to the Swedish coast to fish for sea trout, especially around the west coast, around Gothenburg, you should definitely have this in your box. So the monofilament ribbing just makes the fly stronger, doesn't show really, which is the purpose of it. I don't want any segment or, or ribbing showing, I just want the strength of it. So this is my take of the clam worm, which is called the killer worm, which I started tying about 20 years ago. Uh, preferred in orange or in salmon pink and light brown or rusty brown. Those are my three favorite colors. Even when I'm fishing nighttime uh, in the summers, uh, if the worm is orange, you should still fish an orange fly. Even though it's black outside and the contrast in a black fly is stronger, if the natural uh, that you're imitating is orange, it doesn't change to black because it's dark outside. So get, to get the perfect or right contrast with what you're trying to imitate, you should always use the correct color, regardless of the light, in my opinion at least. So, the orange one is my favorite go-to fly even when it's pitch black. Okay, we're gonna set up for the woolly bugger. Let's go for the woolly bugger. And forgot to say in the uh, first fly, I'm using Partridge Saltwater Shrimp, the black nickel size 6 even though this is a size 8 bag i'm using 8 or 6 uh, most of the time size 6 i think that's a very good all-around size for streamers for coastal flies and as you can see i've changed the thread to a fluo hot orange one because that thread will then create a little fluorescent head on the woolly bugger which looks very good with the brown colors that we're going to use for tail, I'm going to use a chikabu. It's like tiny feathers uh, of marabu. And when you take one out, it looks like this. I've cleaned off a little bit. And the beautiful thing about this feathers and materials is it's very user friendly. You can see I just put it here a couple of turns, wrap it all the way to the front and I pinch it in and cut. And then just wrap the thread down again all the way to the same point and now you can see you get a perfectly even tapered woolly bugger tail you don't have to do anything really and if of course if you tie it in a little bit too long before you really attach it you can adjust the length by pulling but measuring in now you can see again I'm trying to use the same 
length of the body as the tail, giving the hook or point in the middle of the fly more or less. If this tail becomes longer, it more easily will end up like this when you're fishing. Okay, once again, I'm gonna attach the monofilament, 4X diameter, around 0, 016, 0, 18 in between there. Sometimes I even use 0, 20 millimeters, which is 3X. That also works on larger flies. So, okay, for the body hackle on this fly, I'm gonna use Rooster Saddle, Fiery Brown. And the thing is, I'm attaching everything in reversed order. So ribbing is the last thing I'm going to wrap forwards. That's why I'm tying it in first. Because it makes everything a little bit easier. And the hackle is the second part. And the first thing I'm going to add to the body is, of course, the dubbing, which is the last I will attach in order. So I'm cleaning off what I don't want by pulling like this. Pulling off the axis. And then I'm carefully just pulling out the fibers to see what I have to work with. Because I do want to use some of this uh, thinner and stiffer fibers, but I also want the front to be a little bit more filling in. So I'm gonna use this part as well. This is the beautiful part about rooster saddles is that you get both this and that. A rooster neck only has this, these fibers. So what I'm doing now is measuring out uh, this is not always the case, but a normal size 6 hook, and if you do the body work normally thick or dense, this is a good trick that most of the times work. If you're measuring the feather like this, if it is about the same length as the tail or the whole fly, you will be having quite good hackle length. Uh, this doesn't work in everything, but this is a tip how you can prepare yourself to uh, see hackle. If, for example, having a smaller fly, you can have a different uh, point where you're measuring towards. But in this case, this most of the time works. And I'm attaching the feather. You can see that the natural bend, the feather has a convex and concave part. The convex should be facing you. Because when we're doing the hackling, we want that hackle to be leaning backwards not pointing forwards i'm attaching that and now we're into the dubbing i'm going to use first fire orange salmon signature dub as a little hot spot this is a quite long fiber so sometimes i cut it and then i roll it around a little bit between my fingers adding it here then just make it spin around And then we're continuing with uh, Claret Brown Blended Ice Dub. Matches very nicely with the Fiery Brown. And as you can see, I'm using the same dubbing technique here. Pinching it in and then work myself forward, a little bit backwards. Sometimes I'm helping with my finger and thumb. There we go. Can pinch off a little bit of the axis if it gets a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate the hackle by taking my scissor, opening it up. You have the cutting part and then you have the other sharp edge in here, the 90 degree angle. That's the part we're gonna put towards the hackle. And the part that we're gonna manipulate by bending it is the part that's gonna hit the hook first. So I'm gonna wrap this from me, that means that it's this side that I'm gonna crack, like this. I'll get stuck in the dubbing. Like that. Then I can make a little bit stronger effect by pulling backwards here. Then this hackle should be around four wraps around the body and then uh, the rest in the front. I'm coming around, so I'm Every time I come around here, I pull back, pinch, and then I release the grip, and I'm taking a reverse grip. This is because I do not want that hackle stem to start twinning, because that will create uh, hackle fibers that's 
pointing a little bit everywhere like so and then ending in the front here there we go taking a couple of reverse grip with my left hand there then tying that down before I cut there we go but of course before we glue and cut the thread we're gonna add the security to the fly the durability by adding ribbing the monofilament and that's something I wrap opposite so this one I'm wrapping towards me because I want this if the hackle stem gets bitten off or uh, if I hit a rock or something this ribbing will still make the hackle stay on the fly so that's why it needs to be reversed if I'm uh, putting the ribbing in the same uh, same side or in the same uh, f from me it will just be ribbed alongst the, the fiber not crossing it it's the crossing part that makes it f stronger now cut it off and then I'm shaping a little bit of head here because I do want that hot orange to glow a little bit in the water. Not too much though, but a little bit. There we go. Once again, glue. Gluing like two, three centimeters on the thread is enough to make quite a lot of wraps here and cutting it off. As long as this glue is wet, you should try to get to pinch in that little part that you cut, the, the access thread. Then I'm taking my toothbrush or if you have a cool fly tying brush you can of course use that that's what it's for then I'm brushing quite hard because I really want a little bit of that dubbing to come out and uh, if you're afraid to brush your fly hard then it, you probably have not attached stuff properly it should withstand a treatment like this if stuff is loosening or coming off then you should practice a little bit more to makes uh, those wraps a little bit tighter so it lasts and withstand these treatments all right this is my with together with the black variation of this uh, these the black and this is my two favorite woolly buggers and the orange killer worm and I would say with these flies you are more or less good to go for all your coastal fishing just add a bait fish or so and then and a shrimp then your fly box is full Thank you for watching.